wondering if you would advise some of those protesters at home to stop demonstrating against some of the charged rhetoric that has been used by Donald Trump. And I'm wondering as well if you've uh, advised your successor to be extra mindful of what you see as some very worrisome trends, particularly when it comes to making his own potentially powerful staff picks. Lastly, sir, um, in these final weeks of your presidency, do you believe you have any leverage to stop Bashar al-Assad and Vladimir Putin from continuing to bomb Aleppo? Chancellor Merkel, um, I'd like to ask you, uh, Bashar al-Assad has described Donald Trump as a natural ally. Your own foreign minister has described Donald Trump as a preacher of hate. I'm wondering, would you tell Americans that they now have a perception problem? One of the great things about our democracy is it expresses itself in all sorts of ways. Uh, and that includes people protesting. Uh, I've been s the subject of protests during the course of my eight years, and I suspect that there's not a president in our history that at some point hasn't been subject to uh, these protests. Uh, so uh, I would not advise people who feel strongly uh, or are concerned about uh, some of the issues that have been raised during the course of the campaign. I wouldn't advise them uh, to be silent. What I would advise, what I advised before the election and what I will continue to advise after the election, is that elections matter, voting matters, organizing matters being informed on the issues matter. And uh, what I consistently say to young people, I say it in the United States, but I'll say it here in Germany and across Europe, do not take for granted our systems of government and our way of life. I think there is a tendency, because we have lived in an era that has been largely stable and peaceful, at least in advanced countries, where living standards have generally gone up. Uh, there is a tendency, I think, to assume that that's always the case. And it's not. Democracy is hard work. In the United States, if 43 percent of eligible voters do not vote, then democracy is weakened. If we are not serious about facts and what's true and what's not, uh, and particularly in an age of social media where so many people are getting uh, their information in sound bites and snippets off their phones, uh, if we can't discriminate between serious arguments and propaganda, then we have problems. Uh, if people, whether they are conservative or liberal, left or right, are unwilling to compromise and engage in the democratic process and are taking absolutist views and demonizing opponents, then democracy will break down. And so I think my, my most important advice is to understand what are the foundations of a healthy democracy uh, and, w and how we have to engage in citizenship continuously, uh, not just when something upsets us, not just when uh, there's an election or when uh, an issue uh, pops up for a few weeks. Um, it's hard work. Uh, and, and the good news is, I think there are a lot of young people, certainly, who were involved in my campaigns and uh, I think continue to be involved in, in work, not just politically, but through nonprofits and uh, other organizations that uh, can carry this hard work of democracy forward. Um, but but I, I do think sometimes there's complacency. Here in Europe, uh, I, I think that there are a lot of young people who forget the issues that were at stake during the Cold War, who forget 
what it meant to have a wall. And I'll be honest, there have been times when I listen to the rhetoric in Europe where an easy equivalence somehow between the United States and Russia and between uh, how our governments operate versus uh, other governments operate, uh, where those distinctions aren't made. Um, I've said many times around the world that, uh, like any government, like any country, like any set of human institutions, we have our flaws. We've operated imperfectly. There are times when we've made mistakes. There are times where I've made mistakes or our administration hasn't uh, always uh, aligned ourselves with the values that we need to align ourselves with. It's, it's a work of constant improvement. But I can say to the German people that the United States has been good for Germany, has looked out for Germany, has provided security for Germany, has helped to rebuild Germany and unify Germany. And I can say across Europe that many principles that have been taken for granted here around free speech and around civil liberties and uh, an independent judiciary and uh, fighting corruption, those are principles that, you know, not perfectly, but generally, we have tried to apply not just in our own country, but also with respect to our foreign policy. And, and that should be remembered, because in an age where uh, there's so much active misinformation, and it's packaged very well, and it looks the same when you see it on a Facebook page or you turn on your television, uh, where some uh, overzealousness uh, on the part of you know, uh, a U.S. official is equated with constant and severe repression elsewhere, if, if everything uh, seems to be the same, and no distinctions are made, then uh, we won't know what to protect. We won't know what to fight for. Uh, and you, we can lose so much of what we've gained in terms of the kind of democratic freedoms and market-based economies and prosperity that we've come to take for granted. That was a long answer, wasn't it? I don't, I don't remember if I, there was a second part to it. I, was, I got all caught up in, in that one. Ah. Yes, I did. I did. All right. That was uh, President Barack Obama speaking next to Chancellor Angela Merkel after their bilateral meeting and taking questions from reporters there. DW's Rupert Biedervelt is at the Chancellery. We'll get a reaction from there as soon as he makes it out of the room. In the meantime, of course, uh, Dave Keating has also been listening in. Um, Dave, goodbye is a hard thing to